read a few verses of scripture and make a brief application. So again, I want to say it's good to be back in the office and we're just in for today and back out again tomorrow. But I'm excited that the Lord's opening the doors, uh, but also excited that we have a great staff to be able to hold forth how to keep things moving. And I had great meetings in California. The college meetings went exceptionally well. Uh, the church meeting uh, there in North Valley and also in the prisons. Uh, certainly we have a wide open door in the institutions and brother and sister Whitlow is doing a fantastic job. Excellent representation of the Rock of Ages Ministries and, and we're grateful for what the Lord's doing. Um, don't know if you uh, enjoyed the eclipse yesterday or not. Um, we were in flight and I don't think we even got to see the eclipse until we got to uh, Georgia uh, down in the Atlanta area. And the guy was looking at it uh, through a set of special glasses and uh, so he let us look at it. We might have seen about a sixth of it as it was pouring out of it. And uh, But I remember when I was a kid seeing the total eclipse and it turned almost jet black in the middle of the day and uh, even darker than it was in 2017 in the last one. So uh, it's kind of one of those things, I guess, been there and seen that, done that. But at the same time, uh, the Lord's been good to us and I know the world was going to come to an end. But lo and behold, here we are today. Amen. <laughs> if you sold your possessions and got rid of everything, uh, God bless you. We'll pray for you. That's all I can say. Uh, everybody talking about the plane's going to go down. And I thought, well, that'd be a blessing. Not that the plane goes down, but if everybody thinks that, we'll have the whole plane by ourselves because we'll be the only idiots that'll be on there flying. And uh, do you know there were a bunch of other idiots that were flying with us that, on that day and the planes were packed. And uh, I don't think there's even a vacant seat possibly on the whole plane. Uh, but we made it, landed in Atlanta, and here we are today. So uh, thank you for your prayers and the Lord certainly blessed. Now I'm going to go to the, uh, Luke chapter number nine and read just a couple of verses of scripture and to give you some thoughts and will not be too long. But notice in verse number 28, it came to pass at, uh, notice what he says, and it came uh, to pass about an eight days of uh, these sayings. He took Peter, John, and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion uh, of his countenance was altered and his raiment uh, was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, which appeared in glory and spake uh, of his decease, uh, which should be accomplished at Jerusalem. In verse number 32, but Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. And then watch this statement, not knowing what he said. Yeah, yeah. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. There came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Now, I want to put my emphasis today on that statement, uh, not knowing what he said. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard Dr. B.R. Lincoln uh, preach. He was known as the Prince of Preachers. And I never got the privilege of hearing him preach face to face or in any particular uh, institution. Miss Martha's uh, grinning over there, so I'm sure she got to hear him uh, preach, and uh, probably Dr. Havner and many others, um, some of the statements. So I've never heard them in person. I certainly have used many of their quotations. I'll never forget uh, Dr. Havner on one of his tapes. Uh, he got excited. And he said, hold my mule while I shout for a while. And if I'd been there, I'd wanted to hold his mule because I'd want to hear him shout for a little while. Um, Dr. Havner, many of the statements that he made, and then also uh, Dr. B.R. Lincoln. I remember a statement he made, and uh, you ladies probably won't appreciate this one, but he made the statement. He said he preached one day on the ladies submitting themselves to their own husbands and said uh, he really hammered women submitting themselves to their husbands. Said he got to the back door, was shaking hands with people, and a lady came by and said, Dr. Lincoln, I have, you know, if I was your wife, I'd put poison in your coffee. 
And he said, honey, if I was married to you, I'd gladly agree. I think. <laughs> so uh, it's just some of those statements that I hear Miss Teresa didn't like that one. But anyway, uh, so much. I'm glad I'm going to be out of town for the transfers because I won't get no money for, with it being said. But uh, <clears throat> with all that being said, I remember him uh, making this statement about this particular passage of scripture. And uh, he talks about Peter, said Peter was wanting to go into a building program. Notice what he says. He said, uh, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make, watch this, three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. And so uh, Dr. B.R. Lincoln said in this passage of scripture, it is obvious that Peter had never been in a building program before. He had never wanted to build one uh, tabernacle, much less three of them. And more churches have split probably over uh, building programs and remodeling than probably just about anything else uh, that exists. But in this passage of scripture, and notice if you would, in the scripture, he says, not knowing what he said. Now, when you look at verse number 35, but Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And the Bible says it's not just that they were heavy with sleep, they actually fell asleep. Notice he says, and when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And so here in the scripture, we find uh, the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, the Lord is there. Of course, Peter, James, and John is with the Lord. Uh, they uh, go to sleep uh, because of the heaviness and the weariness of the flesh. Uh, the Mount of Transfigurate, on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, God shows up, uh, God's glory is uh, present, is there, and uh, we find that Peter wakes up, and all he sees is the glory of God that rests in their midst. And the Bible says that as a result of this, Peter, he spoke out of turn. Yeah. That's what the Bible says, not knowing what he said. In other words, Peter opened his mouth and talked when he didn't know what he was talking about. Yes, That's what the Bible said, yeah. uh, not knowing what he said. And you know, I believe there's a lot of us today that get in trouble because we talk not knowing what we say. Yeah. If Peter had been awake with the Lord, it is very possible and very likely uh, he would have known the whole scenario. But he only heard a, and saw a brief statement, a brief moment, a brief glimpse, if you please, of what took place on the Mount of Transfiguration, and Peter drew his conclusion. Now, I'm not going to mention names this morning, God forbid, and I suppose all of us are guilty to some degree of having done exactly what Peter did. Have you ever known someone, I know one particular individual that comes to mind, and again, I don't even want to hint toward uh, who the individual was or is or what have you, uh, but have you ever been around somebody that really don't listen? And they're looking, and when they hear one statement that they're looking for, it don't matter what else is said, because they've heard what they're looking for. Yeah. And sometimes it is taken out of context. Yes, sir. And here's what happened with Peter. Peter is asleep. He doesn't know everything that's taking place because he has slacked on his responsibilities. And as a result of that, Peter uh, sees, he hears a certain statement, and Peter spoke out of turn. He spoke not knowing what he said. And you know that if we're not careful, we'll be guilty of the same thing. All yes, right? Um, yes, now, I don't have time to get into all of it this morning and won't uh, take the time necessarily uh, to get into it, but may we be better listeners than we are talkers. Amen. Now, come on, amen. somebody say amen right there, right? <laughs> that includes me. Yeah. I have spoken out of turn in times past, uh, coming in on the, um, if I could use this phrase, tail end of a conversation and not hear the front part of it. I remember one time um, somebody came in on the end of a conversation and we got a chewing because they didn't hear the first part of the conversation. All they heard was the last part of the conversation. They did not hear, hear the pretext of the statement. And so as a result of that, there was a misunderstanding. And so let us be careful. Let us be conscious. You say, we just come back from California. I figured, you know, you'd come out of revival. You'd come back shouting it out, swinging from the chandeliers. I did that on the plane on the way home yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now my feet's on the ground and back to reality. Amen. Um, 
say that jokingly, of course, tongue in cheek, but um, let us be better listeners. Let us be quick to hear and slow to speak. And so in this passage of scripture, and notice if you would please in verse number 34, and Polly thus spoke, now notice what happens. There came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they watched this entered into the cloud. So as the cloud comes down, absorbs them, there come a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. Well, who it is do you think that's God's, uh, that's speaking in this text? It's God himself. Uh, this is my beloved son, a capital S and then O N. It's, it's God. He's speaking of Christ. Yes. And so God come down and he says to Peter, Peter, this is my son. Yeah. Amen. You better listen to him. But you focus on him, not on um, Moses and Elijah. Keep your focus on him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. On the Mount of Transfiguration, when uh, Peter spoke out of turn and God showed up, all of a sudden Moses and Elias have disappeared. Um, I wonder what would have happened more on the Mount of Transfiguration. It would only be speculation on my part if I were to even speculate. But I wonder what would have happened, what could have happened on the Mount of Transfiguration, what glory Peter, James, and John could have experienced had he not spoken out of turn. Yeah. Because God shows up, and the Bible says in verse number 36, watch this, and they kept it close. Um, Peter's not going to talk about his experience on the Mount of Transfiguration. It's one of the few times in the Bible where Peter, and I don't mean this disrespectful, so I'll just say it this way, it's one of the few times he kept his mouth shut. Yeah. Right? And that what it says? Yes. Uh, and they kept it close and told no man in those days any of these uh, those things which they had seen. Um, it was glorious to be in the very presence yes, of sir. the glory of God. This is one of the times in the scripture, there are several times, Peter, he speaks out of turn. Uh, we'll see it uh, sometime down the road, the Lord willing, uh, about the crucifixion. The Bible actually says that Peter rebuked the Lord. There are several times that Peter's, um, well, I don't know how to say it other than said, several times Peter's mouth got him in trouble. Can you imagine rebuking the Lord? The Bible uses the phrase that Peter rebuked the Lord concerning the crucifixion. The Lord tells him that he's going to Jerusalem, that he'll be crucified for the sins of the world. And Peter says to him, not so, Lord. Can you imagine you and I rebuking the Lord? And here uh, in this passage of scripture, we find it at the crucifixion, the transfiguration. There's several other uh, passages. There's at least five instances in the scriptures recorded in the New Testament where Peter actually spoke out of turn. And God's going to teach him a hard lesson. Uh, so I just wanted to give a couple brief thoughts. I was looking at this the other day and the times that Peter misspoke in the scripture. Uh, and he's a great man. God's going to use him in a great way. But we find that uh, he was one who was given to speaking out of turn. Sometimes Peter would speak when he didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, sometimes he would blow things out of proportion. Uh, sometimes Peter would uh, speak before he thought. And God's going to have to deal with him to bring him to the place that he can use him for his glory and for his honor. And then, of course, as I said, at the crucifixion, when he also rebuked the Lord, he said, not so, Lord. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine telling the Lord, you don't know what you're talking about. Can you? Brother Steve, give us a course. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good. 
much that was good about our responsibilities. 